Israel, the one that corrects us, fix your eyes on him.
And like we always say, declarations are not chants. They're not just things to motivate yourself. You're actually praying. We're going to be praying in our understanding as we make this declaration together. All right? So say with me, as the word of God goes forth, my mind is open to receive all that God has for me. I receive rebuke. I receive corrections. I receive instructions. And my mind is renewed. The word of God influences my life. And I grow daily. I will not live here the same. I will not live here the same. I declare that today and forever I see with the eyes of the Spirit. My eyes are seeing eyes. My ears are hearing ears. I discern all that the Lord has for me. And my feet move in the direction of the Spirit. And I want you to say this loud with all your heart. Say there are angels here. There are angels all around. The supernatural is tangible in this room. Do you believe what you're saying? Do you believe what you are saying? So say it again. The supernatural is tangible in this room. I declare that the burning heart ministries is a mighty force in the earth. Pointing many to the truth of God's word, to a life of prayer, consecration to the Lord, and to kingdom responsibility. And I want you to beat your chest and say this with me. God is making a name for himself through my life. God is making a name for himself through my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost? Shadabani Adhai. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, Radabala no Shateli Adhai. Hanamanteli Ato Shatani Anante. Come on, Arato Shatekepeli Adhai. Andemeno Shatakapali Anai. Hey, Rute, Rutana Manakate. Come on, for we've got it all to God. Oh, Ratakapalia time. I enter into the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the I enter to worship you I enter to honor I enter. Can we take that one more time? I enter into the Holy of Holies I enter to the blood of the Lord. I am not my tosha. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor you. Lord, I worship just sing it to the Father. I worship Lord, I worship Lord, I worship and I'm on the end of the for your name is Son 
Mamana for your name.
8 from verse 26 that likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know th- but we don't know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. We acknowledge that we are weak, we acknowledge that we do not know what to pray, we acknowledge that we cannot pray by ourselves, but we, we are giving, we are, we are allowing the Holy Spirit to help us pray. We are allowing the Holy Spirit to help us. The Bible says, with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, come, come before Him, come, come before Him as someone that is weak, come before Him as someone that does not know how to pray, that does not know what she should pray or He should pray as He ought to. And begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, begin to build up yourself, uh, begin to edify yourself, uh, begin to open up your spirit. Uh, the Bible says the Spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Thank you. 
Reso velata i te varai te vala toko velata ma zava resko ve velata i te kafele kava. Can you raise incense? Aba pe reso ve kapa lata i sata i te vele barata. Zove vele kapras kapa i te vala te ma. Zapa pe kapras kafe lata kape la saite. Apa pe tesko fe lata kapras kafe lata mena. Epa pe tas kapa pe lata kai pres kapalia. Apa isate kapras kafe lata mamai teva. Epa ita kasa fe lata kapras saite. Asi papa pe lata kapras kafe lata mena. Esu papa ita te te satia takema. Saite fa lata papa saite me. Come on, you can pray. Asai te vele ko palata me, zai pre kom pelata ite ko pela saita. Apeli ka braska velata pe paso me, esuma na ite ka braska velata ma. Apre so velata ite ka papaita, esata ka be pela tua ta ka pela. Rope be ka isata te mele ka itua. Asi pa pela te ka pa saite ma. Unto him that heareth prayer we have come. Shabim prayer kapo. Iya ta 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 ta. Abom pe 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 ka. Sata ka pe 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 ka ba ta ita. Ase ba 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 la ka ba 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 ta. Ero pe 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 ka. Asa ta 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 ka ba ko. Rapo ba ta 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 ka. Ase ba ta ta ta. Sate ka ba ba ta ta. Ase pe 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 ka ba sa ba. Aba i. Sate ta ta ka bo a ta ta li. Apre so pe pe le ka ba sa ba ba la i ta. Ase ba ba ta 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 ta. Asa i ta ba la ta ka ba ba ta. Saita saita ta mo. Ia ta ka bo. Ia ta. Sata ta 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 ta. Sata ta 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 ka. Rato atia. Ayaite mamela sopa takai, ebrasa papala teka bante malia, saite pepe kapala taka bela seme, ebraso papala teka mela taipo, asiba ke malate ma, asa bela tema kapela takai, asaite pepe kapala tema, apreto me, apreto bela tasa papala teka po, ba te pepe kai, asa bela teka babu tema, arwa te baba baka te malate. Akai, 
Somebody, the spirit of prayer is about to invade us again. Can you hold somebody? Let's pray. You live on Muna Jay, Tilika, the Haji, Kaita, Lemanu, Chela, the Deca, Abimo, Saita, Cabinate, Abe, Coca, the Tia, Taka, Ben, Peletata, Ate, Jaika, Kate, Tometa, I Pomele, Cababa, Sate, Pape, Kai, Kuata, Kapaila, and Pape. Atakai kepala, iya pante de kapante so palata, e brasa palate kapapa palia, e rote kapapa saite, iya taka pepepe so palata ita. Come on, can you raise incense? My God, my God, for we know not what we should pray for, but the Spirit Himself help our infirmity. He help our infirmity with groaning that cannot be uttered. A pelica de matai, Satemo, who attack a papel de toate, we attack a papel at a cape, rapa, a seven pelica pataitia, a braqua de malateta, a sobebebe capala de cabia, a sapa pepeletia, a sata de day. Ah! 
Aikwa, e Papa Wata Kaba Baba Sabele, e Suba Baba Baba Baka, e Rwata Kabila Kabe Bebe Kabala, a Saba Baba Baba Lata Kababila, e Sobre Kaba Baba Bala Tate, e Sobe Bebe Kabala Tate, a Saita Bebe 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 Kai, Tabele Dede 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 Kai, a Seba Lata Delia Kambo, Ba Jesus. Pai te camele da bu, a bebe be kaba ba sabe, a brata ka bebe be samele da kai, a papi a ta 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 dia, a saba ba 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 ba, a brata ka ba te la dia, sa, pa, a papi a le da 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 ka bu, rai ku a te ba. Oh, Holy Ghost. 
Only you are my obsession and I am. Holy Ghost, only you are my obsession. Holy Ghost, you are my obsession. Holy Ghost, only you are.
I saw the future. I saw that what is starting in this room will touch all the nations. I've seen it. Amen. That from this room, young men, young women will rise. That will take the fire of God to the nations of the earth. Ghana for the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. UK for the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. China for the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. America for the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 oh. It's a prophetic song. For the Holy Ghost, Aye. Kenya for the Holy Ghost, Aye. South Africa for the Holy Ghost, Aye. Germany for the Holy Ghost, Aye. UK 
for the Holy Ghost. 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 Sebebe borote pataya. For the Holy Ghost. 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 until you see the nations take it. Until the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. For a little one shall become a thousand and a small one shall become a strong nation. God is multiplying your strength. He's giving you the strength of a thousand warriors so that you can stand. Aye! For the Holy Ghost. Yeah. For the Holy Ghost. Kai. For the Holy Ghost. To the nations, 
Ah, yeah. speaking in Joshua 1 and verse 3 and this is what God is saying to us now hallelujah we are going to pray again the Bible speaking in Joshua 1 3 it says every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon it says I have given you every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and so the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. <laughs> Hi. I see it. For the Holy Ghost. I see it. I see it. Don't stop until you see it. said to us and as we shout just like the children of Israel did territories are opening up <laughs> do you believe that one two three someone shouts Sika 
you are doing and all that you have said we receive it we receive it we receive it we receive it we receive Kai there are angels here now distributing gifts distributing things putting fire upon the heads of people distributing things Kai. activating graces activating things in the spirit there is an activation right now an activation right now an activation right now Kai. giving some of you visions. He's giving you visions. He's putting territories in your mind, in your heart. The assignment is to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. Kai. Kai. <laughs> a little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a strong nation. <laughs> we serve a God that can multiply strengths. For even the youth shall faint, and the young men shall utterly fall. But the Bible says, He giveth power to the things. And to them who have no might, He increaseth strength. Someone needs to press deeper, press deeper. Be bottom, be be bante. Shaka ba 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 rata ba bonse fite. E brasa punta pa kula manta bine tom brate kive. Lighta ba broske pite skabanteli. E be punta piruka pa ya sakala. La ba boka tapa broto kope katua kate. E be pika sai sakapata na. A brata ba koteli. Zebinanto be bishakaya. A brata kaba kote pina satana. A ruta kape tom pina sakani. A ruta pe ne sekitaya. Increase my strength. Increase. A du veve ze ze vivanika. A du veve ze vavanika mbaba matani. A boom pe pe te te de. A repete pe kopo poko soko kai. A pato papa tike saya. Ika be be keto be misa sani. A ruba kana. A ruba kapa batwa kai. Sababe na siape, si kapete, si kapete pele masane, si kapete bombro koto, so pepete pina kapa papa ya, aruta me si kaya, ay, akapa pepe to pepe pekete, sabaya, abra papa pokoto pepe pika to papa ya, 
Something is breaking in the atmosphere right now. Procession in the spirit.
Just close your eyes where you are. The reason why I'm not talking yet is because God is talking to you already.
clarity is coming on so many issues. Direction is coming now. Healing is coming. here right now. There are angels here right now. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. It's becoming overwhelming. It's becoming overwhelming. It's becoming overwhelming. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. Pouring oil. Activations. 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 Hi. certain things God has asked you to do before now and you've tried to do them before now but you struggled you struggled you struggled but right now the angel of the Lord will sweep through the room from the front to the back and he will begin to administer oil oil that will strengthen you ah, it's coming already oil that will strengthen you that will give you grace that will increase grace is pouring it out is pouring it out it's an anointing it's an equipping so make you strong strong in the things of god so strengthen you so strengthen you so strengthen you so strengthen you the very places that you have struggled, Kai, you will live here and grace has been poured out upon your vessel. He's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. <laughs> He's pouring it out. He's pouring it out. Grace is being poured out. God is making you strong. He's making you strong. He's making you strong. He's making you strong. Someone is not connecting. He's making you strong. He's making you strong. I see the oil in the spirit. 
and it's overwhelming. It's making you strong. You see, the heavens are open and oil is being poured out to make men strong in the very things that God has instructed and led you to do. Now God is making you strong. Holy Ghost, pour out that oil. Pour it out. 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 Pour out. Pour it out. I see God giving wings to someone because when you begin to pray from now, you will gain ascendancy in the spirit. I see chains breaking off the legs of people. God is bringing you out of the very bondage that has kept you bound, kept you grounded all this while. And he sent me to announce to you that today is the day of your deliverance. So come out of what has held you bound all this while. I came to summon you up to the depths of God so that you can begin to see like God sees so that you can hear like God is hearing. Aila katonte tebe Aila katonte pepele Alebe bongo zuza kadededi Bebine me rope zikaya Kaya I am seeing another dose of oil in the spirit. This one is tick, tick. Because there are persons here that God is activating you right now in the prophetic. Right now. Right now. Giving you visions and dreams. Sky. Your dreams that were lost, they are being restored. He's restoring the dream. <laughs> he's restoring them he's restoring them he's restoring them he's rest ah, yeah. before when you sleep you are summoned and you begin to have a, a heavenly experiences but it ceased right now there's a restoration God is restoring every grace every expression and manifestation of his spirit that have been lost before now there is a restoration I just in case there is something you've been asking God for an expression of his spirit now is that time the heavens are open and God is giving is activating He's giving. He's activating. He's giving. If you can ask for it now, you will see it heightened in your life. God doesn't just want you to obey. He wants you to obey with grace. Add the spice of grace to your obedience. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's good to obey. You will be productive when your obedience is infused with the grace of God. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Strong men, thank you. 
Thank you for coming. Thank you. Genesis chapter 20 and verse 7. <clears throat> Hallelujah. This is the school of prophets and this is the second, um, our second meeting this month. I, I see some new faces and you are all welcome in Jesus' name. too high, we will not be able to study the Bible. Hallelujah. I want to define some terms shortly before we, uh, we're going to pray again towards the end. We still have like um, an hour or 15 minutes there about. Uh, so we'll do Bible study for about 40 minutes and then we will pray again at the end. Hallelujah. How many of you were here last week? Okay, how many of you, this is your first time coming for this meeting? Raise the hand now. I want to share cars, key holders or cars, khaki, khaki holder. You're welcome. Hallelujah. So last week, how many of you that are here for the first time have watched last week's message? Okay, a couple of you have. So last week, <coughs> excuse me, I went to preach somewhere this morning and my voice is doing like this. Last week, we tried to establish the fact that um, the gifts of the Spirit are for every believer to walk in. Hallelujah. Beyond the gifts, the manifestations of the Spirit of God is for every believer. But you see, the school of prophets is not just a meeting where we learn about the gifts of the Spirit. It's much more than that. Even when Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 2, he said the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto all men to do what? To profit. Hallelujah. To profit. It means that there is an end to God making miraculous faculties available. The charismatic, charismata, the uh, expressions or the abilities. I believe it's NLT that, make, that puts it this way. The special abilities that God gives unto, unto, unto us. And that, that's um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We call them miraculous faculties, miraculous abilities. It says now concerning the miraculous abilities. And the reason why they are miraculous is because they transcend what you are able to produce as a normal human being without the involvement of the Holy Ghost. But the school of prophets is not just about teaching you how to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. That's basic level. One of the things that I'm hoping to achieve, and this is the first of many, all right, the second of many, rather, we had something like this last year, and it's going to be a consistent thing, even more than once a, in, in a year. And the whole idea is for the believer, all right, to be familiar with the unseen realm, for the believer to be familiar with, because man, I know we, we like to say that man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. Uh, unfortunately, I studied my Bible and I, I, did not, I, can't, I can't prove that statement from the Bible. What I can prove to you is that man is spirit, man is soul, man is body. Now, in Genesis, are you with me? In Genesis chapter 1, <clears throat> Bible was speaking and God speaking says, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness, let him rule and have dominion and all of that. Then the next verse says, so God created man in his image. We understand by progressive study that what God created in Genesis chapter 1 was the intangible element of man. In other words, the spirit of man. Are you following me? Do you believe that? Now, in Genesis chapter 2, God decided to continue that work because when God said, let us make man, he didn't just have one aspect in mind. He had three aspects in mind. And these three aspects must work hand in hand in order for a man to really live up to the definition of man. And I mean human being when I say man. I mean mankind. Hallelujah. In Genesis this chapter, chapter 2, the Bible speaking in verse 7, the Bible says that God it says, so the Lord God formed what? Man of the dust of the earth. And then 
man became a living soul. So that's why I cannot prove that first statement that says man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. What I find in my Bible is that man is spirit, is that man is soul, is that man is body, and all three aspects must work hand in hand. Now, Paul was speaking in 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, is that verse 23. He said that I pray that God sanctifies you and keeps you holy, that your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body might be preserved. Man is spirit, man is soul, man is body. And then in Job's rendition, Bible speaking, Job says there is a spirit in man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same way God is father, God is the son, God is the spirit. All three are God. There are three persons, but it's one God. Do you understand it now? I can go on and on to show you stuff, but... Now, I need, I, I, I need us, and God wants us to be familiar with the intangible aspects of our existence. Number one reason is because what we see now being the visible world, the Bible says this will pass away. And when this passes away, there's something that will remain. And the thing that will remain is the intangible aspect. So the Bible even still speaking, I'm just showing you some, some verses here and there. It says it is appointed unto man to die once. And after death, that means death, which we understand as the cessation of life, is not the end of life. In some sense, it's actually the beginning, it's the beginning of eternal life for the believer. And it is the beginning of eternal death for the unbeliever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is an intangible aspect. And the life and ministry of Jesus is littered with the introduction or the expression or the manifestation of the intangible aspect of, of creation. Last week we looked at the scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 that says, By faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. And the things that what be do not come from the things which do appear. So the things that you see are not from the things which you see. That means there are things that you don't see. And the things that you don't see are responsible or is responsible for the thing which you see. And he explained that to be the word of God. Hallelujah. Paul says, while we look not on things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we say prophetic, prophetic, I want to attempt to define it a bit. I can't really go so deep because of time and all of that, but when you say somebody is prophetic or something is prophetic, see, there are several ways you can understand that, but I want to start from the first time that the word prophet was mentioned. Because when you hear prophetic, it's sharp and distracting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you still here? If you say something is prophetic or something is poetic, when you add IC to a word, it means that the thing you are about to describe sustains some of the attributes of the parent's word. What's your name? Tommy. No, your name. Whose name ends with a consonant? <clears throat> Let's say your name is uh -huh, Abigail, for instance. Is that your sister? Your cousin. You guys look alike small. So let's say <laughs> Abigail grows and becomes very rich in Jesus' name. Yes. And very, she comes, becomes very wealthy and very successful in her field. And then you now want to use her as an example to teach people in secondary school. You can joke around and say, aspire to be Abigailic. <laughs> it means like, aspire to be rich and influential in your field. Do you get what I'm saying? So when you say something is poetic, it means it's, or a person is poetic, it means you are behaving like a poet. So when you say prophetic, it means you are behaving or you sustain some attributes that are um, commonplace around a prophet. Amen. And I'm hoping that I'm going to show you that every believer by design, not just every believer, man by design, sustains 
that attribute called prophetic. Now, it might not be playing out in your life. It does not mean it's unavailable. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are certain things that can be yours. But until you apprehend them, it will seem like they are never yours. Paul was speaking in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. He says the communication of our faith is made effective by the acknowledging. That Greek word there is epignosis. By the revelation knowledge of that which you have in Christ Jesus. Philemon 1 and verse 6. That's what he was saying. So the first time we see the word prophet used, or the first person that was literally called a prophet like we see in the Bible, was Abraham. Let's do Abraham. Um, <laughs> let's do Genesis. Genesis 20 and verse 7. The Bible speaking, I'll read from verse 6 to verse 7. It said, And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know, I should, I should I go back? Should I do, I'm thinking if I should read the whole chapter, but... Um, okay, let me do from verse 4. Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? Talking about Abraham and his wife. And she, even she herself said, is my brother in the integrity of my heart, and innocent of my hands, I have done this. Verse 6 says, and God said to him, as Abimelech, in a dream, yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me, therefore I did not let you touch her. Verse 7 says, now, therefore, restore the man's wife. For he's a what? He's a what? Now, I know that when you call somebody a prophet today, it's because you see them walking in a world of knowledge. They can tell you what you ate yesterday night. They can tell you um, your bank account, how much you have inside. They can tell you (laughs) the dream you had. And these are good things. But Abraham was not walking in that, let me use your language, in that dimension when God called him a prophet. (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Abraham was not walking as his way in the ministerial aspect. That's the outward aspect of what we call prophets today. There are several reasons why God called him a prophet. It could be, okay, it is his ordination because God also called Jeremiah a prophet like that in Jeremiah 1. But before we even analyze that word, ah, you see that ringtone, is not of God. Off, off your phone. Off it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> I want us to look at another verse of scripture. Before I, I will attempt to dissect that word prophet so that we can look at the attributes that makes a prophet a prophet. And when we say prophetic, we cannot know what to expect. If you say a person is prophetic, if you say a believer is prophetic, there are certain attributes that are obtainable. Do you understand? You are not taking notes. You are... So, the second verse we will look at is in the book of Exodus, chapter 7, and verse 1. Are you there? I will wait for you. Some people are there. Are you there now? All right. Exodus 7 and verse 1. The Bible speaking says, So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be, what? Your prophet. Your prophet. It says, I have made you as God unto Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. Now, in Genesis 20 and verse 7, that same word was used. If you study the Old Testament, you will find two categories of men that were called prophets based on the meaning of the word prophet, or the root meaning, the root word. Because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in what? Greek. You know that. I believe you know that. Now, the two words that I used to call or refer to a prophet in the Old Testament, they mean two different things, uh, but they are from the same foundation. The first word is the, Greek, is the Hebrew word nabi, N-A-B-I-Y. The second word is the Hebrew word choze, C-H-O-Z-E-H. Now, when you hear nabi, uh, what nabi means is an inspired speaker. Hallelujah. One who speaks from inspiration. And when you see the word chose, is referring to a beholder of visions. Are you with me? Nabi is one who speaks by inspiration. Chose is one who speaks by vision or who is a beholder 
of visions. And those are the two major expressions of the prophetic you will find in the Old Testament. Either the one that speaks from inspiration or the one that beholds, that sees something and speaks. And there are certain people in the Old Testament that operated in both. Somebody like Isaiah operated both aspects very fluidly. You see, for instance, in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, what? I saw the Lord. And in several parts of his rendition, you see him referring to things that he has seen in visions. The spirit realm will open up to this guy. And he was given permission to write and to share. Because that realm also has regulation. It was also Paul that mentioned, and I believe he was talking about himself. He said, I know a man. Whether in the flesh or not, I do not know. But he was caught up into the third heavens. And the Bible says he saw things that were not, he was not given the permission to say the things that he saw. Did you, have you seen that in your Bible? Some of you are looking at me. Have you seen that in your Bible? And it means that that realm has a regulation. It's not everything you see that you will say. I think, I feel like dwelling on this a bit because we are used to sharing things now. And if you are the kind of person that you speak a lot when you see something, your, your frequency of sight will begin to drop. This one is practical. <laughs> he says the things he saw, they were unlawful to be spoken. <laughs> and I need to let you know that there will be consequences for breaking that law. One of that is that the realm of the spirit will begin to withdraw certain privileges from you, little by little, until you learn to bridle your tongue. There was a time that anything I see, I say, I see, I say. I see, I write, I see, I tweet. A time, I see, I post. I see, I preach. <laughs> Until God began to teach me the principle of silence. That, you see, fellowship is at the root of every interaction that God has with man. So, therefore, God is not just trying to entertain you. Sometimes he's showing you things just because he loves you, not because he wants you to preach about it. Eh? Sometimes he's showing you things so that you can know what he wants to do. Not so he can go and announce it to the world. And so if you are that kind of person that you are always speaking, when you see something, you are telling, you are calling, I'm going, we're going to look at how to interpret and know when God has spoken and all of that later on. But you see, that is an essential principle when it comes to operating visions. And I'm, I'm taking from the end and mixing it with my notes now, but you'll, you'll get where I'm going shortly. Not everything they see that they talk. Nonetheless, Isaiah, like I was speaking about, he operated both offices. So you will now see in Isaiah chapter 53 and several other scriptures in Isaiah from verse 5, it says, well, he, in verse 3, he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. You see, that is inspired speech. He was speaking about a future event as though it had already happened. Something that was not going to happen in his lifetime. Or even five, ten generations from his life. Amen. Amen. He says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. When I begin to explain how the believer is prophetic, you will now know why I'm teaching about all these things, about the inspired speech, about the beholder of vision. Because that is also the nature that you have. But we'll get into that shortly. Those are the two major expressions of the prophetic you'll find in the Old Testament. The ones that behold visions and the ones that are inspired speakers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look, if at all we look at the gifts of the Spirit, you see, some theologians of old have categorized the gifts of the Spirit into three categories, which I'm sure you know. They call some the, um, the, um, the power gifts, where you have the gifts of faith, healings, and workings of miracles. They called some the what? Revelation gifts. So you have the discerning of spirits, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And the last is called what? Utterance. Utterance gifts. So you have the diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and all of that. So when you look at the nature of the revelatory gifts, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, you will find. I wish I really have time, that the, those revelation gifts, they operate through channels. And I will explain what I mean by channels. It's not, a, it's not a mysterious word. Just relax. 
what I mean by channels, I mean things like dreams, things like visions, things like knowings. The whole aim of the School of Prophets is for us to be abreast with all these possibilities in the Holy Ghost and learn how to harness them. It is in harnessing them that can and will be our deliverance many times. You know, some, somebody might want, to, might want to embark on a trip to travel somewhere. And while you are, you've paid for the bus ticket or whatever ticket and you are about to enter the bus, suddenly you begin to experience some form of discomfort on your inside. And you don't know what this discomfort means. Or you've not taught yourself how to stay until you find out the meaning of an incognitive mode of communication that the spirit realm operates by. And that person now, might, because of the way they are feeling, God might just be merciful enough for, to manipulate some things around and then they will not be able to buy the ticket. And then they will now hear, God forbid, that that boss had an accident and the only thing that survived was the bread that they bought at the junction. The bread will be hanging on the tree like this. The person will now say, ah, something in the term is say, you see, that something is a faculty that is resident. And I'm telling you that you can harness it. You can use it every day. It must not be a mistake. That you say something, tell me. That's something where they tell you, you can be in tune with that thing and you can check that thing before you make a decision. Do you understand me? Christ fanatic. Do you understand what I'm saying? You thought I would not see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. These things are available to the believer. So we are going to look at all of them. So now, when you hear prophetic, and the word that was used to describe the brother Abraham is the word Nabi, and it speaks of an inspired speaker. And so, both aspects of the prophetic that we see finding expression in the Old Testament sustain the common denominator called inspiration. Now, what is inspiration? <laughs> Bible says, holy men of, of old speak as they were moved. Some other translation says, as they were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Talking about the writing of the Old Testament, of the Bible. Amen. What is inspiration? What is inspiration? What is inspiration? I can give a layman's definition of inspiration. I can say it is the communication or inspiration is receiving information from the spirit realm. Let me break it down. It's receiving information from a spirit. Some of us believers, we think that in the realm of the spirit, it's only God that is there. That's the problem. There are all kinds, all manner of spirits are there. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are all manner of spirits in that realm. All manner. As you give yourself to the study of God's word, and as you give yourself to protracted long hours of prayer, because that's an essential aspect of the school of prophets, learning how to pray, because prayer is one of the tools that God has given us by which we can heighten the abilities that God has given unto us. Paul, can, Paul will be telling Timothy, he will say, stir up the gifts that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Stir it up. And from looking at Paul's teaching around things like stirring up, building up, mounting up, quote and unquote, edifying yourself, we find a common denominator called what? Prayer. Amen. When we look at things that happen when people prayed, we can see how much of the supernatural, how much of intangible stuff are made available when a person prays. When you look at Acts chapter 1, for instance, you see, if I want to teach on prayer, that's going to be one of my go-to scriptures because something very remarkable happened. Jesus was done with a meeting. And when he was done, the disciples went to go and sleep and do other things. He went up the mountain to go and pray. And when he was done, the, before he was done, pardon me, the disciples were looking for him. And when they eventually found him, they said, Master, all men seek thee. Everybody is looking for you. And Bible says when he was done praying, he looked at them and says, let us go into the next city so that I can preach there also. He didn't stop there. He says, for therefore have I come. That kind of statement coming after prayer, it means that in prayer you touch, you can touch the very essence of purpose. When I see a person who, you were born in on campus, now you are, you, we can't trace the fire. It's not because after school God gave you a job. Mm -mm. You, have, you are not praying again. That's the truth. Your prayer life is suffering. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you know they pray. That, that's the way the problem is. When you hear the way certain people speak, you can tell because prayer, 
Hey. So back to our word for prophet. Inspiration. Inspiration. It's receiving information. That's, that's layman's definition. From the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Another um, usage which we find, which we saw, and that's in the book of Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1. The Bible says, So the Lord God said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be your what? Prophet. And you must realize that part of why God did this was because of the speech impediment that Moses had. And so what God was saying was that the same way Aaron will be your prophet because you have speech impediment, but that's a metaphoric way of saying that the purpose, primary purpose of a prophet is to be the mouthpiece of God. And that is consistent with New Testament explanation too, because in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 11 and verse 12 down, when the Bible says, and he gave gifts unto men, he gave that some should be what? He gave some apostles, he gave some prophets. When you dissect that word prophet as used in the New Testament, you'll find two words there, pro and femi. And if you want to transliterate it, what this means is for to speak, one who is a speaker. <laughs> so the meaning is consistent across board mouthpiece do you understand me are you following me a prophet is a mouth is a what a mouthpiece it means that in order to be the mouthpiece of god you need to have honed your faculties of communication to be able to receive information from god are you following me to be able to what receive <laughs> because the greatest challenge in this thing i'm saying is that you will find jesus speaking in john chapter 4 and verse 24 and he told us the nature that God sustains. He says, for God is a spirit. There's a problem there. The problem there is that the average Christian has not honed their spiritual faculties to communicate with a spirit, not talk about God. Are you following me? Don't be lost, though. Just stay with me. For God is a spirit. Now, you need to ask yourself, how do spirits communicate? How does God communicate? It says, for God is a spirit. So, if I want to talk to you now, you are hearing my voice, right? That's communication. So, your physical sense for, of hearing is receiving the words that I'm speaking. But now, a spirit wants to speak. A spirit is in a totally different realm. The reason why you can hear me easily is because in this realm, there are three things that exist here, and I mentioned them last week. In this realm, you have space. In this realm, you have time. In this realm, you have matter. And the fusion of space and time, and, okay, maybe we can, we can debate the matter aspect, unless you look at the subatomic level, but if we look at just space and time, you see, vacuums are created, or channels of communication are created that can be exploited to achieve communication. You know, I studied engineering. And one of the things that we did is communication theory. And in communication theory, we look at how information leaves point A to point B. For instance, in a phone call, when you want to make a call, right, your phone has something called an input transducer, which is what converts your words that you're speaking to a mode that can be, that can, be, that can travel across, across a channel, converts it to a waveform. It travels, several things happen while it's traveling, but at the end of the day, it gets in some, technology is trying to reduce the time of transmission and reception. It gets to your phone, and your phone now has something called an output, pardon me, the other way around. Your phone now has an input, the recipient has an input transducer that will now convert it into a means that the person on the other end can hear. And then it will amplify the signal, and then project it through your phone speaker. Hallelujah. In the realm of the spirit, there happens to be <laughs> that kind of makeup. Because when a spirit wants to speak, in fact, when the realm wants to speak, it doesn't need words. If you study it carefully, when Jesus went up the mountain and he called his guys to come with him, and the Bible says that I am Elijah and who? Moses appeared. Those guys did not need to submit their ID card and say, Namio. He didn't have to do that. But Peter in his gym, gym, he said, let's go and make tents for this. How did he know that the person that had, had appeared here 
is Moses. How did he know that this other one is Elijah? That realm has an education system. Have you had a dream? And in that dream, you found yourself in a place you've never been to. You woke up and you knew that in that dream you were in London. But you've never been to London. In fact, the one you see in movies is color graded. They've used VFX to change everything. You've never been to London. But when you woke up, you knew. So I go to London for my dream last night. There are times I'm maybe giving a word to somebody. And I tell them I'm in your house now. I never go to the house before. And I'm seeing a blue couch, a black this, a this, that. I never go. To, I, don't even, I don't even know you. <laughs> that realm has an education system, an educational system. It can instruct. Are you following me? And the, the way you can achieve or receive communication from that realm is what we, we will still call inspiration. Inspiration. And this is a part of the believer. If you can harness this thing, you will always know when it's time to sit down, when it's time to stand, when it's time to walk away, when it's time to run. Because there are times to run. Mm. There are times to sit down. There are times to be still and know. There are times to run. <laughs> Hallelujah. Inspiration is commonplace. It's commonplace. It's commonplace. Now, let's go to the New Testament. Um, time is going. Time is going. Time is going. I want to show you something in the New Testament because I want to show you how inspiration is akin to the believer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, let's do from verse 6 to verse 16. Um, and uh, I'll just read from here. But I want you to open it as well. So if you are there, say, I'm there. Ah, only two people are there. If you are there, say I'm there. All right. First Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 6 to verse 16. The Bible says, however, we, we speak. We speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Before I proceed on my reading for this scripture, there's something that I've honed on my inside. And I know when God wants to speak to me. It's like, it's like when your phone is ringing, you know you have somebody who wants to talk to you. And then you can pick the call and you can hear. And because of my kind of makeup, I operate with sound. And if I want to amplify what I'm hearing, I just need to hear the right sound. What I'm hearing now is not the right sound. So let's find the right sound. What key are you on? Okay. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for... This thing I'm doing is, I know you are looking at me like a carnal man. It's very spiritual, I promise you. Let's just pray in tongues for the next two minutes. Wait with the keyboard first. Let's pray in tongues. Let's, let's touch that realm a bit. I'm seeing a vision, but it's bouncing back. I'm not, I'm not apprehending it. Efrata pala mona siambe benon seleba alash. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You see, God is healing somebody right now. Then again, about two days ago or thereabouts, when, when was that? Yeah, I was praying and then I saw some angels. And when I saw these angels, they had, they were holding, <laughs> I know this will sound like Nollywood, it's not that's just, may let God help your mind. They were holding body parts. It, blood was not dripping from it. I don't, it's not Wolverine. Uh, and God made me understand that these are the ones that will begin to perform creative miracles. That person needs a creative miracle. Hallelujah. So let me ask, is there anybody that has had some issue with hearing of recent? 
Stand up. <laughs> I was that thing that I, I was seeing it, but it was bouncing back. We have to find the sound. We don't find them now. Now lift your hands. Put your hand on the ear. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let that ear be fixed now. You see, I'm seeing one of those angels walking on that ear. I can see it. May God open your eyes to see what I'm seeing. He's walking on it now. He's walking on it now. It's making your hearing better. It's perfecting your hearing. It's perfecting your hearing. You will not only hear better now, you will also be able to hear the voice of God much more clearly. Thank you, Jesus. Now look at me. I see, all right, that there is a prophetic deposit that is on your life. And it's operating primarily through dreams. That's what God, that's the plan that God has. I don't know if it makes sense to you yet. It does. What can come? Let's talk. Let's just now I'm seeing something again. I don't know if the person is here or online, but who has something to do with Ebony State? Ebony State. You have something to do with Ebony. Maybe you have somebody there. You. Who is the person? Okay, stand up and wait for me. There's no time. I behold in the spirit a ladder from the earth into the heavens. And I see a book open in heaven. The Lord is saying that this one is my mouthpiece. And from what I see now, there is an activation of every grace that is needed to fulfill that office. And now I launch you into a new season of encounter. Beginning from now, your spirit is open. Now, look at me. Your brother. I want to pray for him concerning some kind of terminal illness. However, that's not the main thing. Eh? But I don't know if you are aware, but there is something that reoccurs in his life. A form of ailment comes and it goes. It comes and it goes. Maybe he has not told you, but you can ask him. And when you ask him and he confirms, also tell him that God has healed him of that thing. All right? And then I'm praying because I'm seeing time, time, time. Let me just say this. I'm praying for him. What's his name? I don't know. If I if am. If, if Victor is better. I think. Now, man, I do, boy. We don't, we don't know how to pronounce all those other names. But I'm seeing that there's, there are resources in his hands, but it's not fully translated into what it should translate into. It's correct. I'm correct. No, I didn't see it normally. And I pray in the name of Jesus that whatsoever is stopping his financial progress, I break it now. Yeah. And I launch him into a season of abundance. Yeah. That the hand of God will be strong upon Victor and he will know the right decisions to take concerning his finances. Yeah. And every mistake he has made before now that is causing him loss, let the mercy of God begin to speak for him. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. You can see them. You know, the problem with this thing I just did now is that now my eyes are open and it's hard to teach, but I'm, I will try. Amen. I will try. Kaya, go, men, so be the pay. First Corinthians chapter 2. 
from verse 6 to verse 16. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like when your phone is ringing, you know somebody wants to talk to you until you pick the call. You can't know what, they are, what, they, what the person has to say. That's how it is sometimes when God wants to speak to you. It's like a summon. You, you just know it. How many of you know that, know that experience? You just know that God wants to talk to you. <laughs> I'm seeing three people in the hall now. You've been having that kind of experience of late that there's something God wants to tell you but you don't know. Let me help you. The way to know, because sometimes when God, when he wants us to pray and spend longer time in prayer, he begins to knock on the door. Is that knocking that we translate into you are feeling like I should, be, I should go on a fast, I should pray long. That feeling you are having is, is God is knocking. <laughs> are you hearing me? God is knocking. Let me try and teach because I'm not in this room anymore. We speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Meanwhile, check your ear. When, what symptoms do you normally have? When last did you feel the pain? And he comes and he goes, Abby. It's gone, it's not coming back again. Yeah. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, verse 9 says, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches out all things. Yes, the deep things of God. I would love to dwell on verse 10, but let's proceed. Verse 11 says, for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Look at verse 12. This is my emphasis. Follow me carefully. Verse 12 says, Now we have what? Received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. That's what? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us. There's something I think you have been missing here. (laughs) And maybe I just have 10 more minutes. I am not interested in paying for one extra hour because this whole course. Listen, see the first thing he said here in verse 12. He says, now we have what? Received. And then he went ahead to explain something. He says, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. And then he went ahead to let us know what kind of possibility the spirits we have received will make available to us. And what he said here was what? He says, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know. Simply means that the Holy Ghost that you have received gives you the, number one, it gives you the capacity to know a spiritual thing. That because you have the Holy Ghost, you can now begin to interact with the realm of the spirit. You can now begin to interact with all that God is offering humanity in Christ Jesus, because you have the Holy Ghost, you can know them. That's how you you now begin to learn that knowledge is not just information. So that we might know. This kind of knowledge does not just inform you, it transforms you. So Paul was speaking in Romans chapter 12. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And your mind is part of your soul. Your soul is made up of three aspects. Your soul has your mind or your suke your soul has your will those of you who have been attending bible study you know the last one what's the last one not fall my hand over just try what's the last one bukola i said intellect mind uh-huh. Uh-huh. no intellect is your mind your will who knows the third emotion okay people they raise their hand for back your, mind, your soul is made up of your mind. Your soul is made up of your will. Your, what many calls it your organ of volition. And your soul is also made up of your emotion. All right? And God is expecting, or in spiritual growth, what happens in spiritual growth is that every aspect of your soul is brought under the lordship of Christ. 
So you begin to use your mind. For instance, let me show you how the Bible recommends that the mind should be used. If you look at the, um, the book of Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, Finally, brethren, whatever, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, think on these things. So the Bible is recommending how to use your mind. Hallelujah. This is, is like a, it's like a, it's like a litmus test for the kind of things to give your mind to. And you know that you are growing when the way you use your mind is in accordance to this verse of scripture. The Bible also gives us uh, um, recommendation on how to use your emotion. Paul was speaking in Colossians chapter three. He says, "If you then." Be risen with Christ. Do what? Set your affections where? On things above where Christ is. Set your what? Affection. Set your emotion. Let the kind of things that move you be things above. When he says, I don't have time to explain this. It will take too much time. I just have five more minutes. And you also find scriptures where Paul is trying to make us understand this thing I'm explaining now. And he can say, for instance, he says, for it, um, that's Philippians 2, verse 13. It says, it is God that works in you, both to what? Will and to do. So the way your soul should be used and the way your soul should, the kind of life you should live on the soulish level is recommended in scripture. And you know you are growing when every aspect of your soul, like I just showed you now, is in alignment with the word of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> So let's go back to that scripture as I round up. First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, I was explaining what it means to receive. He was explaining to us that to receive, he says you have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That means there are two kinds of spirits that a person can receive. That your clock is too early. I still have five minutes. Two kinds of spirits. Number one is the spirit of the world. Now, Paul is also let's, making us understand that you can, that based on the spirit a person has received, there are certain possibilities that will become available to that person. For instance, Paul was speaking to Timothy. He says, you have not received the spirit of this world that you should fear. That means fear is, should only be a possibility if you have received the spirit of this world. But that's not the spirit you have received. It means that for the believer, for the believer fear is a lie. It's, it's not consistent with the spirit you have received. Are you following me? Yeah. To receive a spirit is what he's explaining here. Now, if you have studied the Bible carefully and you see all the traits, attributes, and offerings of the devil, whenever you see any of them trying to play out in your life, what should you say? I have not received the spirit of this world. So study the Bible to learn the attributes of the spirit of this world. It was John that made us understand that that thing called this world is not just a, a geographical location, but a system. Now, John was speaking in 1 John chapter 3. He says, for all that is in this um, five, for all that is in this world, and he called three things. He didn't call a human being. He didn't call your village. He didn't call your country. He said, the three things that are in this world are, number one, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of what? The eyes. Number three, the pride of life. That's a system. That was what he introduced to humanity in the garden. Because when the woman ate of the tree, the Bible said that she now saw that the tree was good for food, was a tree that was pleasant to make one wise. Hallelujah. Those three things that he mentioned that are, that are in this world are the very same things that he introduced to the woman. And by extension, the man as well. So that's, what, what, that's why you find scripture like him being called the God of this world. Because man did not understand something, a very vital principle of priesthood. That he being the first being that God has put in the earth and put in charge of the earth, any decision he will make will affect the whole of the earth. Do you understand that? Any decision he is to make. So God put him there with a hope that he would choose him. But the Bible's the Bible speaking, follow me, in Genesis chapter 3, 
highlighted the characteristic of the serpent and why the devil sought the serpent as the beam to use to achieve deception. But says, now the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. So he decided to utilize the ability of the serpent called subtlety to achieve deception. And when he did that, a vital law in the spirit was broken. You see, Satan loves headship. Satan loves to go for leadership. He loves to look for who is the person that God has placed in charge of a thing, of a family, of a place, of even of a ministry. That's why Paul was always saying, pray for your leaders. Hallelujah. I mean, your leaders in, in church. Like you see in Romans 12, towards the end. He says, pray for me also, that I may be this and I may be that. He said, and, and in Ephesians 6, from verse 19, he says, pray for me, that utterance might be given. Pray for me that this... You see, pray for your leaders. Because one of the reasons is why you should pray for your leaders is because Satan loves headship. Satan loves to go. So if Satan wants to get to a family, for instance, he looks for the people that have influence in that family. It starts from the man. Because he understands in the form, the formation in the realm of the spirit, that after Christ is the husband, then the wife, and then the children. Do you understand that? So he goes for headship. Hallelujah. Hi. Is this thing too deep for some of you to understand? The way they look at me like, say, I did, I'm preaching in tongues. <laughs> Let's leave that. Maybe another time we'll delve into that. Let me show you. Because Satan is not, he's not so crafty. He's exposed in the word of God. When you study, when you study carefully, just unplug it from the power, please. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. My angels, they touch things. <laughs> when you study carefully, you will find that the things that Satan does is like he's recycling his arsenal. You are distracted. Follow me. Stay, come back. Come, don't worry. It has just come back. If you study carefully, you discover that his arsenal is being recycled. <laughs> and he most, his most prominent means when he wants to achieve, when he wants to get a person, what he goes for is that he begins to study that person's life and he looks for the things that that person likes. He looks for the lusts that that person has not dealt with. The Bible says the man is only tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. And that's what he did in the garden. He just looked at the woman and said, okay, okay. And he, adver <laughs> he advertised what was already. So all he has to do is to create a, an avenue for you to see the thing you really like. It was hard as, no, you didn't. Let me go back to Genesis chapter 3. Now, Bible says from verse 1, says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast. Please give me KJV. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, He has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, He, he knew where he was going to. He said, The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of this tree, your eyes will be opened and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. The Bible says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, when the woman saw that it was pleasant to the eyes, when the woman saw that it was a tree that was to be desired to make one wise, what Satan wants to do is to create an avenue for you to see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know when Jesus was admonishing his disciples, he says, pray that you enter not into temptation. He was showing you a defense mechanism in the spirit that if you will, if you will descend and dispel the temptations that Satan is bringing to you, you must be a prayer man, a prayer woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, pray that you enter not into. Because it will take, see, you know, there's something that I said before in one of our Bible studies, and I need to say it again, that the Satan you see in, that you see in Nollywood, that you see on African magic, that's not really who the Satan of the Bible is. Eh? Agency, they look. That's not really the Satan of the Bible. The Satan of the Bible, he does not want you to know when he's in action. 
So he will not come with, he knows if he comes with giant horns and a long tail, that's a pointed tip. You will see him, you will pray, you will run, you will do, you, you, he will not succeed. So he, he will wait. He, he sees that you are going for a prayer meeting, he will allow you to be praying. The day you decide to start to lose God, he will start to study the patterns. Okay, so when she's lose God, then what she starts to do is that she starts watching movies unnecessarily. He will write it in his arsenal. The day you start praying again, your lust for movies will, will drop. The day you lose God, <laughs> he will now see. Okay, she watches, he watches movies, and anything that is in the house, he eats, she eats, she starts to call old friends. If you start praying again, those things will stop. He can wait for 10 years and he's taking stock. <laughs> he's right. So, a point will come that he will now have sufficient arsenal that the next time you want to lose God, he has enough things to throw at you that will keep you perpetually bound. Tell your neighbor, don't lose God. Don't lose God. The Bible says, for your adversary, <laughs> the devil, he moves about like a roaring lion. He's looking, he's looking. You know, in that realm, the Spirit of God is, the Bible says the Spirit of God searches all things. Satan too is searching. I need to let you know. He's waiting for him. <laughs> he's a good researcher. He knows what made the, your greatest grandfather fall. He knows that that same thing made your grandfather fall. He knows that that same thing is what is doing your father now. He's waiting for you. But you must rebel against him by not lose guarding. That means you must not allow any downtime. Because he knows that he's not too sure if after this downtime, if you ever have a downtime again. So he will want to administer as much blow as he can in that your small downtime. <laughs> you know, on campus, back then, on my 200 level, after we have a great powerful meeting, I was going to sleep. And I wake up, watch film. He now saw that, oh, this guy does not understand. <laughs> you know, no say, you know, Bible says we wrestle. In a wrestling match, you throw punch, they throw. You throw until the last man is standing. He didn't say we, he said we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against, <laughs> so when you have a meeting and you throw a blow at the devil, Hold your defense. He is going to come. Your defense is the word of God. Though. So make sure you have it in the room. Let it be here. Let it be here. Let it be, let it be everywhere. That's your only defense in the day that the evil one comes. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Don't lose what? Don't lose God. Satan is with your adversary, the devil. He's roaming about. He can wait for 10 years. And that's the reason why the moment you notice that there's a weakness you have, don't pamper it. Don't what? Don't pamper it. And let me speak to my brothers. If you are here and you notice that a lady cannot pass you without you stripping her naked with your eyes, don't think that I'm just a normal man. You are not, you are not normal. It's not a normal thing. You know one guy, his name is... <laughs> okay, I put a tweet. Somebody, I, I was on Twitter yesterday and then... Someone made a tweet. I think a, I don't know how many of you saw it. The lady said um, that you saw it now. She said, and, uh, how, I think she said her husband was cheating on her. And then one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. Then a guy called Luther <laughs> now went to the comment and said, All men are like this. Just be pro- as far as your husband is providing for the home, and he can do whatever he likes. And I now quoted the tweet. I said, I said, Luther is just one out of so many men and women who believe that you can define the standards of life based on the weaknesses of men. Number one, I said, don't be like Luther. <laughs> Number two, I can't remember the other one. I think I said, don't believe Luther. <laughs> don't, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> time, has, time, time is up. <laughs> don't be like Luther. So, as a brother, if you notice that kind of thing, Luther's philosophy is that it is normal that you are made that way. You are not made that way. You are made in the image of God. And let me, let me tell you now. It means it's a problem. And how you address such stuff is that you take them back to the Lord. And you make it a prayer point until it has... You are too confident in your flesh. That's why you are not praying about those things. Satan knows that a day will come that there will be opportunity that all the thoughts in your mind, you go, hey, hey. Hmm. 
Okay. So I remember back then, and I can't even, I don't even have time to share much of your story. But I learned by experience that when you throw a punch at the devil, it's not because you are afraid of him. It's just because you understand how this thing works. And in his deception, he will look for a loophole to strike a blow. Until my spiritual father now educated me in the, in the ways of warfare. That when you are done with a meeting like this, don't go and sleep, sir. <laughs> At first, I thought these people don't have faith. How can you say that? You have trampled on the enemy. It's true. You've trampled on him. It's not, nobody's contesting that with you. Uh, but you need to keep him trampled. That's, that's, that's the thing now. When you strike a blow, <laughs> unless God tells you be still, my brother, open your eye, shine now. Jesus said, watch and pray. Be discerning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are that kind of person, that kind of thing is doing you, you need to leave social media first. Because you know that the moment you see <laughs> The moment a fine girl likes your post, you can stay on her page for two hours. They say me cannot talk. I go talk. I go talk the thing. And you, have, there is nothing. You have, and you will be deceiving yourself that you are. It's a lie. You are looking for something. A day we come. Bible says a man is only tempted when he is drawn away. Bible says lust has a conception period. It says that when lust is fully conceived. It brings forth what? Sin. Sin is now... <laughs> you know, in the, now what you know is that a lady is pregnant. After nine months, she gives birth. Mm-mm. If you are pregnant with loss, it will give birth to sin. Sin is its own pregnancy. That when it is fully conceived, it will bring forth death. And I wish I had time to really explain what that death means. It's going to take me so much time to establish some things. I don't have time to go. Just know that it's its own... It has its own another cycle. So you can kill it when it's at the lost phase. When it's just in your mind. No, it has not yet manifested. That's not the period to start visiting everybody. It's not the period to start going to every party you see. <laughs> Amen. 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 A what? Man. Mm. My time is up. But now, let me end with this before we pray. He says, you have not received the spirit of this world that you should fear. Was that in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 7? You have not received the spirit of this world. But you have received the spirit of what? Of what? Power. And of what? Let me tell you this. There are attributes that are consistent with the Holy Ghost. And and, and you must realize that they are yours by inheritance. The same way you do not pray to be afraid. (laughs) You will not pray to walk in love. You didn't hear me. It's your nature first. Did you pray to... Is just, Satan just took advantage of experiences, of circumstances to administer something that your mind was unable to comprehend. And he made a fear erupt from that makeup. You didn't pray for it. <laughs> you found yourself in that state. Same, this, that same, the same way, there are things that God has made and has given you that are consistent with your nature. We don't come out school of prophecy, man. But we have not actually. I'm trying to help you understand something. I know you don't believe in things like marine spirits. This, this, this. There are actually spirits that have made the water their habitat. I can prove it from the Bible, but I don't have time. And there's a reason why. Oy. No. Time is up. Let's do. Can we do one extra hour? Yes, no, no. Wait, no. Don't be, don't be excited to answer. They don't the dark. Think where. Should we do one extra hour? Yes. How many of you are in support of one extra hour? <laughs> How many of you will give towards that one extra hour? Because now money. <laughs> See, the hands have dropped. We are closing now <laughs> so that we can meet next week. Amen. But I, I just need you to, that's, that, that's what it means to receive it. We have not even gone down in this scripture. To receive a spirit. So when, you, when you've studied from the scripture, what the Bible calls the spirit of this world, and you see everything that is consistent with that spirit called the spirit of this world, when you find any of those things operational or act, active in your life, you rebuke it, you reject it, you deny it. What you don't do is ignore it. Are you with me? And you rather you stir up and enforce the things that are, <laughs> that are consistent with the nature of the spirits that you are of. 
the disciples were going to call down fire to consume some people because they were dishonoring Jesus. And what did he ask them? He says, don't you know what manner of spirit that you are of? There are some things that are not consistent with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let me end here. Paul says, you have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God. And because you have received the Holy Ghost, there is a faculty that has been given to you that is now act, uh, available to you. And that is the faculty of what? Knowledge. He says, because you have received the Spirit of God, you can now know the things that are freely given unto you by God. Hallelujah. Amen. You can now know. You can now know. So because you have the Holy Ghost, you can explore God the way astronauts explore space. You have the ability, you have the ticket, you have the everything to do so. And that faculty of knowledge is what makes inspiration available. The Bible now says, for instance, says, for what man knows the spirit of, of a man? Save, so what man, there's a way he explained it, pardon me. Before he said, we have the mind of Christ. Let me just read that, I don't want to paraphrase. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 13, verse 12, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things freely given to us of God. It says, which things also we speak, not with the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. What does it mean for the Holy Ghost to teach words? Maybe we'll look at all of this next week. The time has gone now. Hallelujah. Okay, you say you want to stay. So we'll use that the remaining time. We'll pray. Because prayer is an essential aspect of this curriculum that we are having now. Let me just let you know that this is not the best that the school of prophets will be. Is we keep on getting better, yes. getting better. As 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 you and I keep on exploring God, our vocabulary will keep on expanding, because when you explore God and you 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 touch things in God, and you find them in Scripture, and it aligns with the right doctrine of Christ, you have grown in experience. You have also grown in skill then you can now begin to impart it. You can now begin to teach it. You can now walk in it as will. I've not gotten to that point, but I'm getting to the place. I'm, by the mercy of God, about 90% there where I can say, okay, I can just look at you and know things about you. Nine out of ten people that I met, I can, that I can do that. There will be one that I may not be able to do it on the spot. I may have to go back home, pray, 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 labor, 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 labor. <laughs> but come back next year. <laughs> Because me, I will keep growing. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep growing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Rise on your feet. Which things the Holy Ghost teacheth? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Which things the Holy Ghost teacheth? Comparing spiritual things but then it says, now you have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that you might know. When you begin to speak in tongues, that faculty can switch on. You can begin to know things. You know, foundationally, what it means is that when you see yourself in the Bible, you see what God's word says concerning you, it's easy to believe it, to receive it, and begin to walk in it, because you know it. But that faculty also makes it available for you to, to, to explore that realm. You can begin to know things. Based on that faculty, you can even know the future. You can know stuff. And that's why that's the, one, of, one, of the, one of the things that gives the believer confidence in prayer. When you are praying about something, praying for something, you know that there is a faculty in you that can touch knowledge. Can touch knowledge. Pray in the Holy Ghost.
Ay la bomoso. Now I see trumpets in the spirit. And whenever I see trumpets in the spirit, God has made me understand that what he wants to begin to do is to activate the gift of prophecy. So there are three persons that will begin to walk in a heightened expression of the gift of prophecy. As you pray now, it's going to begin to, it's going to, begin to well up on your inside. Give mamo, celebe manakoma, saila ma vele mone, bevele musa mama mama, sai mama mo, sai mama mo, ele buna mane, saila vule mona kwamane. I you can become so conscious of that realm that you can forget who's by your side. There are another set of eyes that you have beyond your physical eyes. There's another world, another world beyond the physical world that you know. There's a world, a world, it's the realm of the spirit. It's the realm where the immortals dwell. A realm where mortality is swallowed up by life. It's an endless realm, an endless dimension. An endless realm, an endless dimension. God is calling us to operate, to operate, to operate from the unseen, from the unseen, from the unseen. For therein lies your confidence, Therein lies your strength. He says, We look not on the things that are seen, but on the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, they are temporal. But the things which are not seen, they are eternal. Lord, as we pray, let there be activations all over this place. Now! Saminembo roto mabalande venisha kambeno kai ika papon tetete sai babaluma sai mamame sai mamame lano I that's when you can know when a song comes from that realm when God gives you a song it's, it's like giving you a vehicle in the spirit as you begin to sing it the lyrics of the song begins to stir up a consciousness that draws you into the realm where it came from God is giving you an advantage an advantage an advantage we might not all be prophets, but we will all be prophetic. We are all prophetic. We we'll walk in visions. We we'll walk in dreams. Clear cut understanding. Aya. Katai. Katai. Hey. Hey. 
For fun, you are not just praying because it's the end of service. As you are praying, you are being built up, you are being edified. The things you have heard, they are crystallizing in your spirit. You are being changed to another man, you are being helped of God, your capacity is being enlarged. The grace of God has walked upon you, is multiplied. Blind. For he giveth more grace. He giveth more grace. Kai. Kali kate. Tekika toka kapana. Siamamete. For the next three minutes, press. shall be able to stop us for the most high is with us the Lord of hosts standing with a, an innumerable company we are heavily defended and we will take the word and the fire of God to the nations of the earth it's a heavenly mandate it's a heavenly anointing. It's a divine, divine ayakapote mantalakaya.
something is breaking i can feel it it's breaking it's breaking in the spirit men are being summoned to the chambers of heaven are being summoned kai 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 seek a fire men are mounting up with wings like the eagles of God Kaya Salabata Paputane We are not alone the angels of this commission are here now Sapai Akako Akako Kokopo Ebuse Akukaka Kapo Makataya there's a place where fire dwells a place where fire is manufactured to put upon the heads of men to suck you into that realm a place An ancient mantle has been handed to us. An ancient mantle has been handed to us. An ancient mantle, an ancient mantle. Ancient graces, I see it. I see it, I see it. formation we have been equipped with the word and the spirit Come 
Sile mona makame na mao Kai Ele mina vo velime Ah, 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 ah,
that same vein, just hold your neighbor's hands. Hi. I'm not in a hurry to leave. Just hold your neighbor's hands. And say this with me. Say, from my heart to yours, the fire is spreading from nation to nation. The gospel is prevailing. Say, we are moving on, marching on from Lagos to the whole wide world. We won't stop. We won't stop until the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Hallelujah. So we're closing now. Um, you can find offering envelopes on your seat. So I want to encourage us to please give generously so that we can do all that God will have us do this month. Um, also, I want to really thank every one of you who have been able to make it. I, I know how inconvenient it can be on a Sunday evening especially in Lagos where Sunday might be the only time you have to rest and do all that stuff but you are here and I'm grateful and God bless you all right uh, but also there are people who are unable to make it and a lot of a couple of our workforce are unable to make it right now at this very moment so for the remaining two Sundays that we have I want to make a plea that if you have a skill if there's something you can do right now um, and you would like to be a part of the workforce for the remaining two Sundays that we have this month. Um, there's a beautiful lady wearing green here that is about to stand up. Her name is Bukola. So please see her after the meeting. She will get your details. She will let you know. You will let her, you can let her know what um, where you would like to serve. You can ask questions. Anything that you see, you would like to be a part of, right? Just let her know, and your help will be much appreciated. Secondly. There are envelopes on your seats right now. Um, as great and as beautiful as this atmosphere is, the equipment and other stuff that made it happen did not fall from heaven. All right. Um, but more importantly, we have to pay for this hall for the remaining two Sundays. So I just want to um, indulge you to give generously towards that. Right. And how many of you have been blessed so far? All right, so we are having our, a, a third session this coming Sunday. That's next Sunday. And I want you to come with somebody. All right, I want you to come with someone. I will see how we can start the teaching earlier so we can have enough time at the end to pray and worship and all of that. Okay, so um, our prayer time is normally like one hour. Maybe we can make it like 30 to 35 minutes so we can have enough time at the end to pray and I will not have to start looking at the watch to end time. All right, to end the meeting, pardon me. But I believe you've been blessed. Hallelujah. So just rise on your feet as we close. Okay. I want to pray for you that this week, this is the fourth month in the year 2024. There are things you've tried to achieve in previous months, previous weeks. And I'm praying for you that this week you will start to achieve them. Because God is giving you speed. This week in your place of work, God is setting you apart. And for everyone who is due for a promotion, I promote you now. In the name of Jesus. You know, something happened on Twitter. I just made a tweet last year. The lady just reminded me, and I said, I want to pray for as many of you who will be able to like or comment on this tweet. And then there's a lady that put there that said she wants a job, or she has not had a job, something like that for a long time. I didn't even know. I didn't even see her comments, but I was praying a general prayer that night. And she commented two days after that she had gotten a job. <laughs> me, I was shocked. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you again that in the name of Jesus, 
those of you who need a promotion, receive your promotion now. Amen. For those of you who are due, who is anyone here who is due for a salary increase, receive it now. Amen. By the working of the supernatural favor of God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there is any sickness that you came here with, you are not walking out that door with that sickness. Amen. Because the hand of God is resting on you. This week, you are set on fire for God. Amen. Everywhere that you go, you will see opportunities to preach the gospel, Amen. to make disciples, to get men filled with the Spirit of God. Everywhere that you go, opportunities to heal the sick in the name of Jesus, to cast out devils, opportunities and boldness in Jesus' name. I pray for you that because you are here, your family back at home, they are blessed. And it's obvious that God has used you as a channel of that blessing. Because you will begin to overflow from today. In the name of Jesus. For that person that I can see that in your prayer, in your prayer time of recent has been, the way I can describe it is dry. Now as you are praying, you will experience times of refreshing in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that has stood as a, as a roadblock before you... Be, before now, in the name of Jesus, they are no more. Amen. And every mountain that has stood before you is leveled now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you that wrong decisions are exposed. Amen. And the wisdom to take the right ones is given unto you this instant. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Bye.